Barakatu, we welcome you in my third episode or third part, or sorry, fourth part of talking about towards effective civil society organizations. We talked about the definition of civil society, the definition of voluntary or civil society organization, then we talked about the role of youth, and this is number four is in towards uh, uh, effective civil society organization, which is talking about volunteerism and volunteering. I would like to thank all my colleagues who are helping me in building this series, which is Sahar from Birmingham, Mahal from Istanbul, and uh, Ahmed Sheikh from uh, Idlib. May Allah help them in Idlib uh, in Syria at that time. And if you want to join any one of my social uh, media, you can actually join any of this character, inshallah. Uh, my message for you, young men and young women today, is whenever you have an idea, you have to structure it. And to enable yourself to build it as a structure, or from inside and from outside. That's why for volunteerism and volunteering, I have a structure for this idea. This is the structure of volunteerism which I put it myself. It has got 14 pillars, sorry, 13 pillars. Each pillar is having two points or two aims and objectives. You can see the two, uh, the, 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 the red and the blue crossing one another with a smaller circle around them, so about nearly 12. If you count them, you find them 12. Then you can see the yellow circle around these two crossings of the uh, of the red and the blue and this is a protector of the structure of the idea of volunteering and volunteerism so i've got one protector which is the yellow circle then i've got two vertical uh, crossing one another uh, uh, structure inside the idea of volunteerism then between each circle and the others another small uh, another line which communicating with between each pillar to assure that the culture and the philosophy of thinking of the different ideas inside the structure of volunteerism is working smoothly. Is it clear for you? So let us talk about those 13 uh, points or those 13 pillars of volunteerism. Which is a, it's a, it's a process and system. It's a mission and message. It's a vision and objective. It is a cultivation, pre upbringing, and empowerment. It is a leadership and offering. It's presence and future. It's hopes and dreams, it's burden and solution. It is generation and timing. It is history and cultures, it is values and beliefs, it is structure and protection, it is civilization and renaissance. All these pillars of the structure, it is the pillar of the definition of the process or the system of volunteerism. Let us actually take them one by one to look at the depth of their uh, cultures and values and belief. Number one in front of us, it's volunteerism is a process and system. How it's, it's a process creating or making systems to direct it and to forward it from inside the system, from inside the process. It's like the software of the computer, which is put inside the computer machine to enable the computer machine to create a system and this system coming out from the computer machine will be depending totally on the process has been put inside the computer machine as a software. So it's a process and system as well. It's number one pillar. Number two pillar, it is a message and mission. It's a message that upon any and every citizen have to spread it and have to teach it to everyone okay to enable us as volunteers to fulfill our potential and to achieve our mission so there is no mission without a message and there is no message without a mission
This is the pillar number two. It's also a vision and objective. It's a clear, honest vision. Only seen by people who believe in it, so it becomes extremely clear for you as a believer in voluntarism, and this will enlighten the roads of the believing believers in voluntarism through which they can potentially fulfill and achieve their objectives. Without the lights of the vision of the alignment and the enlightenment of the vision, none of us will be able to see the risks and the opportunities around the objectives that we are trying to achieve. So the vision is the light that you can see through which the, the, the surrounding risks and opportunities of the objectives that you are trying to achieve. The pillar number four in the structure of volunteerism <coughs> is cultivation or upbringing and empowerment. It is cultivation in the manner, social manner and social values. The volunteer, like myself, will see through it closely the suffering of the people that he or she is trying to help. So such a volunteer will be able to learn the good manner of the society and of the people around him, which include altruism, patience, and being good to everyone, being uh, uh, determined to succeed, openness, feeling of the agony of others, and trying to achieve or to fulfill or to make the dreams of other, of others reality. And a lot of things like this social manner that we are actually gaining from being close to the people who are in need. So through this, we as volunteers will gain a lot of experience from the way we deal with the communities that we are trying to serve. And this will enable us to direct and to manage the societies and to achieve our objectives through which we can actually uh, make the life easier and more happier to the people who are trying to serve and trying to fulfill their dreams. This is number four. This is the pillar number four, yes. Cultivation and empowerment are extremely, extremely crucial in this. And cultivation or upbringing has to come through some, through the process of learning from the needy citizen of the society, as well as the senior people are actually uh, start to uh, uh, help us in this. Number five. It is uh, leadership, leadership and entrepreneurship. Me and you, a citizen, will never become leaders before we be empowered. If we are empowered to do our social role in the society, we'll become leader. So empowerment is the first step of leadership. And this entrepreneurship will come to the people who become leaders, will not become to them unless they have the manners that they have gained from mixing and connecting and interconnected with the people there. So they, they gain a lot of new moral values and the manner will be changed so they'll be able to come to become pioneer and to become leader of entrepreneurship. So it is empowerment, leadership, and leadership, if you would like to have this kind of uh, entrepreneurship, it will be based on the manner that you have gained through mixing with the people who are in need 
to a told you a new manner, a new value that you need to get in life. This is Qiyada or Yada in Arabic. It's also number six, presence, present and future. It's the presence that every male and female citizen dealing with it. So it's what we deal with our sites on a daily basis to enable us to draw the dimension of our problems, our social problems, and also to draw the solution of our future when we'll be able to sort out such problems. So we think about what we are nowadays, we know the dimension and the diversities and the depth of our problem, then from that to we'll be able to draw the beautiful image of the future that we are trying to build for generations to come. Number seven, it is hopes and dreams. These hopes and dreams are uh, made by two groups. First group is those people who are in need in our society, who are distressed or displaced on one side, and the other group is you as a volunteer okay, who have seen the hopes and dreams of those group of needy people and they would like to fulfill their dreams and make it reality. So it becomes a responsibility on the volunteer once they saw the dreams and the hopes of the needy people, they have to fulfill it for them. It's also number eight, book is a solution. Book is burden responsibility. It's a buggy or responsibility or a burden carried on the shoulder of the volunteer himself or herself. Such a volunteer would love to carry the burden of the poor people or the poor side. So the burdens or the buggies on the shoulder of the volunteer are three, are three kinds. First of all, you are as a volunteer, would love to build your own social life, to live a nice or easy life, that's number one. Second burden on you as a volunteer, trying to fulfill the solution, find the solution to the problem that is needed by the needy. Third burden is you'd love as a volunteer to find a way to remove the causes of such burden happening to those needy people. So for you as a volunteer, you have three responsibilities. One for yourself. Second is to try to find a solution. Third is trying to find so the removal of the root causes of the problem from the community which is suffering from such problem. This is pillar number eight. Volunteerism also, number nine, number nine is generation and timeline. What do you mean by generation? It is generation after generation will be carrying the responsibility of having such a process and such a system to be stable and sustainable inside our society. It is a system and the process of volunteerism and volunteering. And if it doesn't happen in our generation, at least we pave the way for people or the generation to come to make it happen in their life. So it's, if we fail to do it in our timeline, okay, we can pave the way for generations to come to do it. This is number nine pillar, ninth pillar of volunteering and volunteerism. Number 10 is the culture and history. It's a culture that we gain or as, a, as volunteers and we learn through mixing and coexisting and living with different citizens outside, whether they are poor or rich, educated or non-educated, marginalized or not, needy or not. 
number one. The second shirt might have not been before. A culture that actually will plant it in the depth of our society to create the history that their hands and their achievement have made it through different generations. So a culture should only be done by one generation or one group or one culture, but by everyone try to build such a culture, a culture and the history through their uh, communication and living with other members of the societies, whether they are need you or not need. This is number 10. Number 11 is values and faith of the pillars. You see? Mm -hmm. See, this is the structure of volunteerism, the protector, which is the yellow, as one pillar. And actually, these little circles around here, 12 pillars, so 13 pillars, all of them are interconnected and protected by one another. So that's why I'm talking about those 13 pillars of volunteerism, which become 26 objectives or 26 values. Go back to number uh, 11. Number 11, values and faith. I said we went to uh, uh, values and faith. These values shared amongst the volunteers and the need in different sites. And new values coming out from meeting between the suffering of the volunteers and the solution created by the volunteers inside this big pot of social conflict. This kind of meeting inside, inside the social conflict pot will produce a new way, a new values that we have not seen before and we did not have before. For our society and for our generation to come. So our society and our generation will have different faith, some of which are the heavenly faiths which is created by the Lord Himself, some of it is created or produced by the social values and the social. Uh, uh, belief that we knew about it. and the new one the new social beliefs which have been gained through such experiment that, that every one of us planned to make see it was shared between the volunteers and the needy people then it produced new values which we are talking about nowadays when the need of the people and the uh, uh, desire of the volunteers interacting together to produce the new values and new faith in the society. And this new values and faith does not contradict the religious values which we believe in, but it completes complement actually the system of life that we are following and we are following inside the society that we are living in. And it's a part and parcel of our religious belief. So any new value coming out from the interaction between the needs of the people and the solution to the people's problem produce for us new values which will become complementing to our values and our faith which we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three it is Renaissance and Civilization. It's Renaissance that creates civilization or civilization that creates Renaissance. It's Renaissance based on what? On freedom of innovation and fighting or challenging ideology with ideology, challenging culture with culture, challenging knowledge, social knowledge with social knowledge, challenging 
is uh, evidence with evidence and theory with theory. That's what the challenge is that we need to have based on freedom. Also, it is a renaissance, its foundation is knowledge, its pillar is justice, and its climate is freedom. Its spirit is a good life and a happy life that we would love to create for every creation of God inside the complex structure of coexisting lives with one another. This is Adam Renaissance. Based on different things. This such civilization could be eternal if it was based on values, faith values from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it could be a very temporary one if it was based on personal desire, greed, lust and interest. Okay, this is what we call uh, Renaissance and civilization. The last but the not, not the least in the structure of volunteerism and volunteering, it is a structure and construction. Construction and protection. What do you mean by construction? It is a construction to a complex structure, social structure based on interconnected, solid, stable, permanent connection making it difficult or impossible to rock the boat of such connection and solidity and structure which lead to social fragmentation disempowerment and 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 it's also from outside wuja yani protector protector protect all these smaller societies inside the such a structure through values, faith, social values and faith from inside and make all the social component inside very solid, connected and tied together. And from outside it will be able to fight back and remove and expel every bad ideas coming to infiltrate the society inside through three what they call it radiation or three ways first of all social radiation based on love brotherhood equality uh, altruism Duality, uh, giving all for the social good for everyone. So this will protect the, 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 the structure from inside from this kind of false, bad and foreign radiation coming to infiltrate the structure. This is the first radiation coming from the social for social education based on love and care and equality. Second education coming from inside to outside based on fighting, confronting, uh, uh, dialogue, uh, discussing, research, uh, research, research, theories. And those will be based on the principles of freedom, democracy, and reconciliation, and showing benevolence and goodness to everyone. The third tradition come from inside to outside will be based on it is killing ability to destroy the bad, the deceived, the strange and the people who are stealing the resources of the society 
The people are destroying the wealth and assets of the people through what? Through law procedures, through building structure, proper organization, state organization, civil society organization, unions, as well as uh, syndicates that will be able to fight hard all those traitors, all those enemies of humanity and discover their bad intention through which they want to destroy the society. So the solid structure from inside will be able to emit three radiation. First one is based on love and care, okay, to stop the bad radiation coming to society. Second radiation will be based on confrontation and fighting through research, through dialogue, through uh, new theories, based on freedom and democracy, and after that, reconciliation. Third, radiation, social radiation will be based on the total destruction of every bad, poisonous, uh, strange, who are trying to steal the resources of the local society and our countries. These are the 13 pillars of uh, the structure of our uh, voluntary. So I talk you to all these definitions. And people can do more definitions in building up your structure of volunteering and volunteerism. To know the role that will be played by the process and the system of volunteerism inside the social fabric, the diverse, distinctive social fabrics of our societies, okay? which if strong, connected, will be able to protect the societies such a society will be able to build civilization and create renaissance. So volunteerism is a structure, as I mentioned before, balanced, connected, extended, and extended through different generations, through nations, through continents. We cannot live without it. And even if our countries claim that they are strong, rich, magnificent, volunteerism is the role that each and every citizen has to play to show the depth or the amount of their loyalty and their love to their own society, to their own country, the love to their history, the history of being created by their ancestors and after the civilizations and their urge and their wish to build new future, bright future for generations to come. So if I can conclude today, I can go back to the drawing if I can. This is the structure of volunteerism. And for you, young men and young women, whenever you have an idea, build a structure for it. Thirteen pillars, or twelve pillars, with a protector. As you can see all the round, the, 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 the circles are the pillars, and the protector is the yellow circle. Thank you very much. We'll be meeting you on the fifth part of uh, how to build or towards and effective self-sustainable organization. This will talk about why volunteerism. Assalamu alaikum.